Hey y'all, today we have a Luz uh, Mock Crush 300 that we're going to just break down servers and show you how to reassemble. So let's just get started. I'm going to start with the handle. Kind of just get that out of the way. To take that off, you're going to unscrew this right here. There's a little um, lock washer on there. Uh, it didn't come out. I'm not going to take it off. But I will show you where it is. It's that black piece right there. It spins around. When you screw it back in, it'll just kind of find its way inside the uh, the housing for the main gear or the hole. So you don't have to worry too much about it not fitting. <clears throat> We're not going to do much to this. Just going to kind of clean it off a little bit. Uh, we're going to stick some oil right here. Kind of just spin that and work it in. And this felt a little stiff, so we're going to kind of flex that a little bit so we can clean inside there. And I see a little bit of rust, so that's definitely why it's doing it. I'm going to use my wire brush for this one uh, and if it starts to scrape off that black then we're going to go back to the the toothbrush. But I'm going to spray some Corrosion X inside here. Then I'm just going to kind of work that back and forth to make sure it's kind of loosened up. And then I'm going to add some grease to it. Just going to kind of slather that on there. Then wipe off any excess. And we're also going to grease here and some of that hole right there. Just going to get the spool off and work on the spool next. I'm going to check the drags on this. To access the drags, we're going to pop this little retaining clip that we have on the top here off. I'm going to stick my uh, small screwdriver in, push in and up, and it should help come up just like that. Okay, so back to this. I'm going to pop these off. Then all we're going to do is just kind of clean this stuff out. Um, I'm going to clean this stuff up, come back to you and show you what I'm going to do with these drag washers. All right, now I'm going to use some Cal's Universal uh, Drag Grease to grease these uh, washers up. I'm going to do all of them at first and then show you how they go in one by one. And if you notice, I put a very light coat of grease on there. All right, so first goes in one of those <coughs> uh, carbon fiber washers, then one of these aired, I'm sorry, one of these keyed washers, has a little slot in the middle. Next is a carbon fiber washer, then you have this aired washer, it looks a little different, has two tabs on it, or one tab on each side. They're gonna go in those grooves right there. And then the final set. To put this back in, we're going to simply Look for the groove that it should be in, which is pretty not that low. Take one end, stick it in first, and just kind of use your finger and work the rest around, kind of like that. Just make sure it's in the groove that it should be in when you put it back in. All right, and that's that for that. We're going to add some oil to the back of this. All right, now we're going to do the rotor and the bale wire, or the bale assembly plus the line roller. So to, do, to access that, we need to pop these uh, bearings and that collar off, or that spacer. The way we're going to do that is there's a little retaining um, washer there. We're going to have to click that up over the ridge that it's in just to get it started. Got to hold your finger on one side when you lift one side up just to make sure it's off the groove. 
so you can pull it up. And I'm going to use my trusty old uh, tweezers to pull that up. And the way I did it was I used the flat, or I, I gripped it against the flat side and just kind of pulled up while I protected the top of it. Now you can pull those up. I'm not sure what they look like, just in case you don't hang around for all of it. So then you have the click washer or the click gear there. You have some washers right there. Bearing, spacer, another bearing, then that clip on top. Now let's go ahead and take this set screw out so we can remove that nut and get the rotor off. Uh, is it clockwise? No, counterclockwise to remove it so you're turning to the right to loosen it. Kind of rock to pull it up. All right, so now we're going to remove the bail wire, and the way to do that is to remove these two eclipse or one on each side. The best way of doing that is taking like a really small um, screwdriver here, sticking it down inside, or looking for the gap. Just kind of twisting as you pull up slightly. I'm sticking it under that post, and then I'm trying to twist. Keep my hand here just in case it wants to go shooting around on me but I'm also trying to do it so you guys can see it. Just like that. The little gaps I'm talking about is are right here. Let me show you. These ones are a little tricky or trickier because that gap is pretty small. But you see that gap right there. The little notches right there. I'm trying to fit this screwdriver in there and prying it up. Same thing for the other side. Now I think these posts are the same size, but we're going to keep them separate just in case. I'm just going to push that to kind of get it out. Push that out of there. Leave it there on the left side because it's kind of how I'm going to be looking at it when I'm fixing it or putting it back together. And then just pushing this other one out also. This one's a little trickier because it has that bail wire, or the, sorry, the bail spring under it. So we kind of want I don't want to be careful that we don't have things shooting out on us. That's all. Now, if you notice there, you see a washer on this. I'm going to check the other side to see if there's a washer there as well. Don't know if we do. And we don't. So we just have a washer on this side where the bail spring is. Now I'm going to remove this cover. Pop this down and we look like we're in business. I'm going to take that spring and gently lift it up and pull it out. And I don't think we have anything else to do. This is going to go back on here, so don't want to worry about that yet. Alright, so for this, we're going to undo this screw here to get the line rotor disassembled. We should have a couple bearings in here, I think. Yeah, we do. Okay. Notice that the line roller itself, when you're putting it back on, that uh, thinner uh, gap or space is going facing towards the bail wire. That wider area, which is on this side, will be facing the bail arm. And that is it. Gonna get this cleaned up. Come back to you guys and show how it all goes back together. All right, so we're back. We're gonna oil these bearings here. They're both fine. Work that in a little bit. So we're gonna grab our little bearing grabber. Now we're gonna grease a few spots here around that post. Leave it inside there, inside here. Uh, before I do that, let me show you this part right here. If you notice, there's two tabs or two posts sticking off that uh, post for the line roller. They have to line up inside of an area right here, so I'm going to show you that in a sec. Let me start by sticking these things on. So first, we want the um, first 
bearing, but I'm going to add some grease to it. Just kind of like to protect it against the weather. That's all I'm doing, really. You can or cannot do this. This is your option. Some grease inside here. And on this side, where the other bearing goes. Just stick that one inside there as well. And if I can show it to you, which I probably can't, meaning you can't see it, there's the post or receiving holes right there and right there. So we're going to line this up and kind of rotate it until we feel it slip into place. Like right there feels like it. And it may come out, that's fine. If it does, we're going to just readjust it as we go. It doesn't need to be perfect yet. We're still in, so we're good. And I'm going to kind of snug it down. It's snugged, so it doesn't move out of place. But it's not super snug yet. Uh, also, add some grease on this side right here. That should work. And now we're going to do a little bit of grease right there where that spring is going to ride. Right there where the trip arm is going to ride. And kind of inside there a little bit, not much. Same deal over here. Kind of like that. And I think while we're here, we're going to go ahead and add some grease inside here as well. Now for the trip arm, you don't need to put any grease on it. You can if you want to. It's going to be sitting looking like this. That longer arm is going to be facing down, just like that. You want to make sure you push it up and it's fully recessed or seated. So kind of like that. Take a pivot arm. I'm going to add a little bit of grease right here to the bottom part where it interacts with the spring. And a little bit on the top where it goes inside the bail arm. Let's take that on the top of the spring just like that. So that's how it looks. Stick it in. You want to make sure it's under the uh, trip arm. So that's kind of how it's going to look for you. Now we're going to take this, that little receiving hole right there will be what this is going on onto. And then you're just going to push down. Let's see if I can get it so you guys can see it. You're going to get inside right there. Then push down and kind of rotate as you go to get it to sit in place. I think we're there. I don't know if we are or not. Yeah, we're there. I don't like it. Now I'm going to stick this spring on. I'm sorry, that washer on there. And stick this poster. I notice I'm holding on to all this stuff right now. Now that looks like it's in place, so we're going to cover this up. Hopefully nothing shoots out on us. But all the while I'm still holding on to that bail arm because I don't want it raising up on me. All right. And now we're going to take our washer and just pinch that on. I think for this one, I'm going to use my, yeah, I'm probably going to use my tweezers. I'm sorry, my pliers to do it. it was easier way of doing it that way versus using my trusty old uh, flathead screwdriver. All right, so that one's in and it feels like it's right. So that's good. Now we can take our other one and put that in as well. Just stick it through and stick it through like that. And you're in business. Drop it on just like that. And pop it on. 
feels good. Okay, now I did go ahead and tighten down the screw for the line roller to make sure it's snug and not gonna fall out on us. Now let's get to this stuff. We can take that washer off, undo these three screws that are on top here. And all these screws are the same size. Pull that cap up just like that. Notice that the ramp was facing on this side over here. So that's where we put it back when we get, when we put everything back together. Now at this point, I'm gonna take that spring off so it doesn't shoot out and we lose it. And that is not easy. Just kind of raise it up and push it that way to kind of pop it off. But I was holding onto the side so it didn't go shooting somewhere. Now, I can pull this up at this point if I wanted to. Don't really have to, but I'm doing it. So there you go. And I will pull this part up. Let me work on opening these uh, three screws to get this side cover off. All right, I'm pretty sure all these screws are the same size, but we're gonna double check just to make sure. Yeah, they're all the same size. Now we're just gonna lift this up to get this off. Kind of like so. Now we're gonna push this down, try to, get to, try to get this all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna kind of lift this up a little bit and then stick my screwdriver in here and undo this screw that's right there. Now we can pull this essentially out of there. Come on, be nice. doesn't want to be nice there we go pull the gear out and where's my screw right there block comes out you got that support for the block and then you have a screw I believe right here as well yeah so we have to unscrew this also Now you have a bearing here and you have a bearing on the top here. Let's get both of those things out. Uh, the one thing I'm not removing on this is the anti reverse cam because they are kind of a pain. And I hate to tell you that. But if it had to be removed, I would take it out. Just so you guys know. All right, so for the top part, we had this cover. You had a bearing on top there. And I showed you the washer already that was on top of that. You have the sleeve for the anti-reverse clutch, anti-reverse clutch, and that spring that goes on top of it. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna get it cleaned up, and as usual, come back to you and show you how to put it back together. Yeah, that's it. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm gonna start by adding some grease inside certain areas. Definitely inside here where that anti-reverse clutch is gonna sit, plus those bearings and whatever else. Certainly don't want something getting stuck inside here. You can add some grease to the top of those holes there as well. And on a little bit on the cam, just because it's there. A little bit in that hole. We're gonna start from the top. That's kind of where it sits. That's for the bushing that goes right there. Around there where the crosswind gear sits. A little bit inside there where that bearing goes. I think that's probably it. This side we're only gonna do inside here where the bearing sits. Now for the gears, we're gonna grease all of them. And this is gonna be a light coat, but I am gonna grease the entire surface area of all these gears. A little more, or a little more than usual not unusual but then you do it for the sides on top of that post and of course on the bottom and inside there where that brand is going to sit let's 
Same kind of deal for this. I'm going to add a little extra inside that gap right there. <laughs> Definitely somewhere on there where it's going to go through the bearing. And on the same for the other side. And also where it's the handle shaft is going to go through. I'm going to stick some inside that hole right there. Light them out also on the pinion gear and grease the rest of it. Try to get some on the threads as well. This bearing cup. this bushing that's going to go inside right there. I think that's it. Yeah, we'll do the shaft in a sec. We don't need to do it right now. All right, so next I'm going to oil these bearings. And I forgot this wheel had like a whole bunch of bearings. Uh, and if you wanted my opinion as to how many bearings a real or a good amount for a reel is probably three. That's it have one here on this side, one on that side, and one for the pinion gear. I like bushings in the line roller, and I like bushings as well on the handle because the bearings can either freeze up or lock up or break down and just make your handle or ruin your handle. So just my thing. All right, so I should have been doing this while I was talking to you guys, but you know, I like to stop. Then the same as the before, I'm going to work those in. All right, now last piece we're going to do is this uh, enter reverse clutch. We're going to take our Q-tip and just kind of work that in like that. Clean that out a little bit. Then we're going to add some a couple drops of oil to a couple different places. And that's it. Now we can stick our bearing in. Get our crosswind gear in there. Put our bearing in the bottom. See if that works. It didn't. Snug it down pretty good, but don't over tighten that because getting it back up might be tough. But you don't want it kind of loose either. And now we're going to take our top stack and work on that. Let's get our bushing in there. I'm going to just drop it over like that and then it's going to push it and then push down. That usually works, but okay. So now we can put the pinion stack back in. Uh, I'm going to show you something before, um, I'm sure a few things before we move on. I'm going to take this off just so you can see it. If that does come off. It just goes back into the slots that are on the top. Make sure it's seating flush when you put it back in. I'm going to add a little bit of grease around here. And now we're going to stick this spring back on. And the way it's going to sit is looking like that. That flat side will be facing down on top of this. I'll be going from that direction, looking just like that. All right, so let's take our pinion gear simply drop that in like that. We're going to take our sleeve, put that on. And now when you get to the, um, when you get to the anti reverse clutch, you want it fitting between that gap or this end fitting between that gap, but you also want these two little tabs here to fit in the grooves that are right there and right there. 
So the best way of doing it would simply be to just take this top off, but we're not going to do that. We're going to kind of work it in there and make sure you guys can see it. I'm going to rotate this until I can find the two channels. Then just drop it down. Make sure it stays in there. And now what we can do is finish this up and then we'll put that spring back on so we can kind of load it. Drop the cup in. Bearing goes inside there. And everything is kind of just secured. So now we're going to take our pick and just pull that spring over. Then just kind of drop it in place. I'm going to keep my finger over this so I don't lose it. But now that's set. I'm just going to double check it before I put everything else together. Feels like it's working, so that's good. All right, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not going to cover it up yet. I'm going to add some grease to the bottom part where it's going to go inside the block. And there's a deeper cut and a shallower cut. The deeper cut is going to be facing up towards this main gear. The shallower part will be facing down towards the housing. I'm going to take this shaft right here, drop it inside the channel it's supposed to be in. Just kind of hold on to it a little bit. I'm going to push this post down towards the bottom and then just put that in just like that. So now we know it's working because we can see that it's over the post and I can feel it moving so that's good. Now I'm going to take this and disengage it. It's already disengaged because when I put this gear in I want to be able to move it back and forth um, just in case I need to. Let's take this shaft through just like so. Now I'm going to kind of angle my main gear and then just drop it in place. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know, I guess it depends on the day. Who knows? Anyway, I forgot to put my screw in, so hold on one second. Get out! Where'd my screw go? I'm just securing that shaft to the block. Then just sticking this back in. That looks good. Now we can take our now we can take our shims, put those back on. And we're going to put our bearing on there and then our side cover. Then we're gonna secure it. Take our washer back on the top. And I'm going to cover that up. That's going to be facing this way, just like that. And you'll kind of feel it fall into place where it should be. Check it out, make sure it works fine. Feels good. Feels good. Okay, so now we can take our rotor, stick that back on there. Add our little washer, our plate. Then we're gonna screw that down. Oh, it's lefty tidy on this one. I'm going to kind of line that up to where I can get access to one of those holes. Right there's good. I don't want to over snug this because I don't want to damage the, the pinion stack, meaning the bearing in there. Alright, so all we have left is just this stack where the click gear is. Drop that over. Take our spool washers. Stick those on there. And now we're going to oil these bearings. 
I'm going to change that bearing out. So let me measure this up and then see if I have one, which I'm sure I do. All right, there's a new bearing. We'll stick that on there. That feels better. Okay, so first goes on the first bearing, then the spacer. I'm going to add a little bit of grease inside here so it doesn't get locked or frozen to that shaft. Drop it on, then stick on this bearing. And all we have left to do is put this little clip on. And I'm going to show you where that, gro that groove is for that I was telling you about earlier. So it's right there. So when you pop this down, I'll show you how I'll do it. I'll take it, make that, uh, that the gap part fit over one of the threaded parts because I'm going to use my, probably use my um, tweezers again to push it down. So just push. And it's going to go down past that groove. So you're going to have to pull it up to get it to lock in place, which it just did. So we are good to go. Let's test the reel out, make sure it works, and then be done with the video. I'll do my usual spiel of thanking you for watching it and all that good stuff. If you want to stick around for that. Let's add some grease to these threads here. And the reverse works nicely. So the bail flip worked nice. Drag feels good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you appreciate the, the, the video or the content, please hit the thumbs up button. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Hey y'all, today we have a Quantum, <laughs> I say no damn quantum man. This is lose, baby. Come on now, get it right.